and welcome back. This is the second part of a two-part series. If you did not get a chance to download the first part, I highly recommend that you go and listen. That being said, today is going to be about what major universities are saying about magnetic therapy. So stick around. I think you really will enjoy what we have to say today. Talk to you soon. Welcome to our Journey into Pain Medicine, a show about combining chronic pain management and the powerful tools for pioneer treatments. This is the Drowning in Pain podcast show, the latest news in pain care and magnetic therapy for the health-minded person. Now, here are your hosts, John and the Jewelry Lady. We're going to go over and see what some of the major universities. And when I say major universities, I am talking and about medical colleges. Yes. And I what would, did you find out, Rhonda? I know you were looking at some of them. Well, there was one that stuck out to me, and it was a doctor at a New York medical college. He was a clinical professor of neurology. And this was, this was by far, it was a small study. It was only 24 people, but it kind of stuck out to me. And it was a four month four month study. And which college? This was the New York Medical New College, York Medical right? College. And I think you know it hasn't been around very long. I think since eighteen sixty. Yeah, that's all. And you know, and they're in the top one hundred medical schools in the nation of biomedical and, health yeah, sciences. And yeah. like Rhonda said, he is a licensed doctor. Yes. So, <laughs> um, I think his study is pretty good. Yeah, and he did a good job with the placebo effect. Uh, as far as hiding what was magnetic and what was non-magnetic when he was doing his study. So he really got a true true effect when it came to what worked and what didn't work. But um, it was a four-month study. He only had 24 people, and it included diabetic and non-diabetic patients. Ten of them were diabetic. The rest were multiple myeloma, lupus, alcohol patients. So this really wasn't on pain of a joint. He was actually looking at other th- no, other it, other studies using magnetic therapy. Well, specifically on foot pain. Right. Yeah. Right. Which is okay. Yeah, you know, specifically on foot pain. He that was what he was concentrating on. And it the first month the whole study revolved around foot pads with magnets. And these foot pads, one of the foot pad had magnets in it, the other one did not. They were low intensity magnets. And each patient wore one magnetic, one non-magnetic. After the first month, they were told to wear them 24 hours a day. After the first month, without telling each patient, he had them switch. And they were asked to score their pain two times a day on a one to five scale. At the end of the study, nine out of the 10 diabetic patients, or uh, survey takers, I should say, said that they reported a full point less pain on in their feet, foot pain, diabetic foot pain, because of the magnetic pads in their feet, on their feet. Of the others, three of the nine non-diabetic felt uh, relief, and 22% of the placebo group, which had both non-magnetic pads. But his biggest thing was it was a significant effect on the diabetic patients, their nerve pain in their feet. And he he believed that the uh, the magnets targeted the the small C fiber nerves in the soles of their feet, which um, which had uh, something I don't know. He's the doctor, but some kind of magnetic field um, created some kind of ionic um, electrical energy, which uh, lessened the pain in their feet of a diabetic patient. But it um, it was a small study. It was um, well done. Um, I haven't followed up anymore on any, if he had done any other studies, I'd like to, but I was impressed with this one. I am going to uh, also attach a link at the end of this show so you can come back and uh, look at this study also and read about it because it is quite interesting. And uh, maybe you too can also um, Google him, see if he has some more studies on this also because he's quite an interesting gentleman. Okay, final one is actually written trying to find the exact information, but it's, and you'll see it reported with Baylor College of Medicine. In 1997, they did a study on magnetic bracelets. 
And there was a doctor who had the, the study, and there was questionable thoughts about the result. So another doctor who was interviewed by the New York Times, who was also a chairman of community medicine at Baylor College. Again, Baylor College, uh, just so you know, uh, again, is a college that has been around. It's out of Texas. It's been around since the 1900s. It's also on the top list of uh, 100 medical colleges. And the thing is, is when he was looking at the results, he told the New York Times no one was more skeptical on using magnetic bracelets for pain than he was. So he himself did a study. He took about, I think it was 50 volunteers. They used a gauze rate of... I think it was three, three to 500 gauze rate, right. which is actually pretty low. Again, could you... Can you explain gauze rate in case people um, miss it? Well, when you're when you're considering three to five hundred gauze rate, you're almost talking about a refrigerator magnet strength, which is quite low. Right. So the bracelets that you make, on average, what would you say? I would say they're twenty to thirty thousand minimum. So a, a little stronger than yes. uh, the three to five hundred. So yeah. so keep that in mind when you start listening to some of the results that we have here that he did. After the investigation, what he did was, out of the 50 people, he used 39 women and 11 men in the study. They had to use a grade scale of of 0 being none to 10 being the worst. 29 received the active magnet, which means they got anywhere from three to 500 gauze. The rest received a placebo placebo effect, absolutely placebo effect. And the results were what? I mean, I, I found it kind of interesting. Uh, the 29 who received the active uh, magnet reported a reduction in pain to f- to 4.4 from 9.6, which is quite significant. So it's huge, right? Actually, con- especially considering how low the magnet strength was. And then comparing that with a smaller decline from 8.4 from 9.5 among the 21 treated with a, sh- uh, you know, the placebo the magnet. The fake one. Yeah. So that's... That says a lot in his study. So it really changed this doctor's opinion on what worked and what didn't. And and if you read of all these different websites that I've listed here for you, you will see that almost at end of every study, they couldn't 100% say it worked or it didn't work. I think a lot of these blog sites that are out there that are being ran by non-medical people like to take that information and run and run with it, with reporting it. it. It's a fake. It's a fraud because, you know, fake news makes a great story. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot of research out there and there's a lot. It's warranting a lot of research by a lot of big universities and, of course, by the U.S. government and for the U.S. government to actually shake their head and say, hey, maybe this warrants some information and some investigation. And more studies. We, yeah, we really can't say. You know, for them to finally wake up and say that, you know, maybe there's something to it. But again, going back to that government study, they did in the report, even though they're saying they're not 100 percent sure, um, they did comment. And you'll see it if you read it. What. Um, and, I'll, and I'll actually quote what they wrote in that report if we didn't, is that whatever the mechanism, the benefit from magnetic bracelets seem clinically useful, mm-hmm. even though at the end they were saying they're not sure. Right. That in mind, all I can say is try it. If it doesn't work, move on to something else, just like mm-hmm. medications that you go on with your doctor. How many of you have gone to your doctor, and I've said this in other episodes, that you're taking a medication, it's not working. And you go back to your doctor and you say, hey, I need something, so he prescribes something else. So even in pharmaceutical drugs, Mm -hmm. it's not 100% effective in every person. Right. So. So it's easy to take these studies and say, oh, Hey, at the end, they weren't sure, so therefore it didn't work. Right. No, it, it, they didn't say it didn't work. What you they said try was it. it worked in some and it didn't work in others. Right. So, so, 
So there you have it. You got the lowdown on all that. Yep. We hope it was helpful. I, again, will link all that to you so you have all that information and read all you want. Read all about it. Okay. (laughs) Well, I thank you very much for listening to the fifth episode. So next um, week. Yeah. What are we talking about next week? Do you know? Or are we going to surprise them? No. I think we should be talking about the different types of magnetic jewelry and how the placement of them benefits with pain. Yes. Sounds good? Yes. All right. Surprise. We'll surprise surprise you with more stuff. So again, thank you very much, and we will see you. This has been the Drowning in Pain podcast show. Want more? Check out our latest shows about pain management on iTunes. Join us next time for another episode with John and the Jewelry Lady about pain care and magnetic therapy for the health-minded person.